Hi, yeah, today I'm going to talk about uh, climate policy. So yesterday we uh, have some talks about uh, climate science. So here as an economist, we need to say, okay, we, after we know this climate science, what an economy can do, what a policy maker can do. So uh, this is a uh, work together with uh, many other people, e economists, so based on two uh, major workers, working papers. So uh, first, uh, when we talk about uh, global warming, so in fact, uh, you know, it's not to uh, say every place uh, we have the uniform temperature increase. In fact, uh, in the North Pole, it, uh, you know, it's much faster speed up uh, in uh, warming. So it's about uh, twice faster. So it means what? It means uh, the Arctic sea ice, you know, the melting will be much faster. And the Greenland ice sheet and uh, also West Antarctic ice sheet uh, may have a higher speed in meltdown. And then we know sea level rise, and this sea level rise is kind of irreversible. And also temperature is warming, in fact, it's also warming the water, so the ocean water. So then we know this uh, uh, that's a thermal expansion there, so sea level again rising again. So this kind of thing is uh, irreversible. Once it happens, you know, it will take a, take a thousand years to cool it down, so to uh, let it down. So, and another thing is the permafrost uh, melting. So permafrost is, uh, in fact, is all the bigger issue here because uh, uh, we know uh, currently uh, in the atmosphere, the carbon concentration is about uh, 800 gigaton. But in permafrost, it contains uh, double of this amount. So we know if it's uh, twice over this uh, carbon concentration in the atmosphere, temperature will be about uh, three degrees higher. So this, uh, if permafrost all get out, then will be about six degrees higher. So that's a very dangerous thing. So then also it uh, will increase the frequencies of extreme weather events and uh, something more uh, serious issues, maybe tipping points. So tipping points is something uh, we say some bad events, it may happen but uh, it have some irreversible damages. So once it happens, it kind of never come back. Just like uh, the Greenland ice sheet, once it collapses and melts down, it will take a million years to recover it. So basically, these kind of events we want to try to avoid. So this paper, basically we developed a model, so this is a modeling work. So uh, we developed the dynamic integration of regional economy and spatial climate and uncertainty. So we call it a die rescue. So this we incorporate the sea level rise and also permafrost and also incorporate the spatial heat transfer and uh, using these recursive preferences. So this kind of economic, uh, as a decision maker, we need to think about the future and the today and also risk aversion. So it's not just a uh, current generation. We wanted to consider future generations. So then uh, we also we wanted to allow the adaptation. To, uh, so you no know, damage is there, so we want to allow, say we can adapt to uh, these damages. So we then calculated our parameter values to match these historical data and also the uh, projection data uh, from RCP scenarios. Then we solve this kind of, we call the feedback net equilibrium of this model. So this is kind of a say, uh, if you know, we have these two regions, so they're not cooperative with each other, so then what's the optimal solution? Then after we solve these things, so then we have some climate policy there. So uh, we find that if we ignore this pole amplification, ignore this sea level rise, or ignore this adaptation, then we'll, complete it, we'll lead to very serious bias. And uh, we also find that if no cooperation, then we'll lead to much smaller carbon taxes than uh, co pollution, then it will lead to much higher temperature in the future. And then also we find that the north has uh, uh, higher carbon taxes than the tropical south. So the north we define it as uh, so the region, uh, high latitude region above the 30 degree uh, latitude. So then the left part is the tropical south. So uh, these things we see first, uh, this uh, region. So temperature is increasing differently. The North Pole have a higher temperature, fast temperature increasing. Another thing is economic side. North region people, uh, most of the countries are richer. And uh, the tropical area, most countries are poor. 
poor people are more vulnerable to damages. And uh, some studies say uh, that North P uh, region, somehow like uh, Russia, they may be benefit from this climate global warming. So then, but in our, even in this sense, we still find that North region, they still need to have a higher carbon taxes than tropical south. So this is our model basically here. So we have break that economy into two regions. And uh, so this temperature, we have two regions. And these have three levels of carbon concentration, three levels of temperature. This is ocean temperature. So then create some damages here. So damages including from temperature and the sea level rise, also from some climate tipping points. So then as an uh, economist, we basically can uh, take a care about uh, the consumption and the uh, utility. So we want to maximize the utility. So this, let's ignore these this stochastic things. So most uh, economic uh, models, uh, integrated assessment models, they just are deterministic models. They assume the future is certain. So then they just solve this kind of deterministic model. So they uh, wanted to maximize this uh, welfare. OK, so this subject to some conditions. That's easy. We don't need the blue waters. But if we say we incorporate this uncertainty, incorporate these risks, then we also want to consider these epistemic preferences so that's for risk uh, aversion and also take care of the future. So that's like uh, the intertemporal elasticity of substitution. So then we want to solve these kind of math problems. These we call the Bauman equation. So this is, you may get confused with these things. But uh, if you think it is a, this is a corresponding to PDE. So PDE, but it's more than PDE. In our PDE, it has maximization here. So that's not a trivial. So this is what we uh, typically we call it is a uh, HJB equation. So Hamilton, Jacobi, Bellman equation. So if it's a low dimensional thing, it's yes, fine. But this is a high dimensional more than 10 state variables. We have uh, 10 continuous state variables and one discrete. And uh, it has eight decision variables. So this is uh, like uh, you are solving a PDE and uh, with maximization, but uh, with more than 10 degree, uh, 10 state variables. So this is a uh, typical our computational method. So basically, uh, we call this V is a value function. Value function. So if we know that uh, next period of value function, then we backwards iteration to get the today's value function. So, yeah, but it can be parallelized. So we basically we break this into many maximization steps. Then we collect, collect them as a fitting step. So, similarly, saying if that is a social planning problem, is a cooperative. We assume, you know, every people they are very cooperative, but in fact, uh, people they are somehow selfish, so they don't want to cooperate with each other. So then uh, we wanted to solve this feedback Nash equilibrium. So this is a similar thing is uh, like a, a, this is more mathematical. So similar thing, look at this very similar, but uh, it's uh, more challenging in fact, uh, because uh, this one is uh, computationally very challenging. Okay, so here uh, we use the blue waters uh, so uh, for one example, uh, we use uh, it we needed to solve two billion optimization problems. We use 3,000 cores, uh, only take us three hours, but otherwise it will take one year. But uh, another biggest one, we need to solve 372 billion optimization problems, and 80,000 80, uh, or 84,000 cores, and eight hours, otherwise it will take 77 years. I cannot live so long. Okay, so here's some results. So basically, uh, we find uh, uh, first, uh, here's the common text. So uh, this is a stochastic thing. So this straight data is uh, say all possible values uh, of these uh, uh, carbon taxes. So then we can see, uh, so we can see uh, this, uh, this red line is a deterministic model. So, and uh, then uh, the solid uh, black line, so that's just, uh, uh, our solution uh, before the tipping. So it was basically the black, our average line. So you can see that risk really influences the solution significantly. And uh, 
So, and also we can see that uh, this uh, column is a cooperative. This column is a uh, uh, non-cooperative, the so feedback natural green solution. So we can see this is much smaller than this uh, cooperative solution. So uh, when we, people are not cooperative, people are selfish, so they don't want, don't want to pay higher carbon tax. Uh, but, uh, uh, but then we can see the north region and the south region. So north region, in fact, is still higher than south region, so relatively not very significantly for this uh, non-cooperative way. But for the cooperative way, they are much, much, much bigger than this. So cooperative way, because north, people, north region people, they are richer. They wanted to pay more. So they wanted to be more cooperative. So if we ignore these poll amplification, then we also can see some biases here. So basically, uh, so uh, we will, if we, if we ignore polar amplification, so that means the uh, temperature in the north region will be uh, lower than uh, current, uh, uh, current way. So then basically we have adaptation will be also, uh, with polar amplification will be, this for the long will be higher than no polar amplification. So these are a lot of bias here. So now if we ignore the sea level rise or ignore this uh, adaptation, so this, uh, if we ignore sea level rise here, so this is a cooperative solution, so this deterministic same. So compared to this stochastic same, we can see stochastic same is much, much bigger than deterministic same. And uh, also cooperative way uh, compared with uh, this uh, feedback and natural equation, you see feedback and natural equation is much smaller than cooperative way. And, uh, and uh, similarly, if we can add adaptation, then such a cause of carbon will be much larger. Because in fact, uh, we can adapt to this uh, climate damage. So if we ignore that, uh, then, then such a cause of carbon will be much, much larger. And if we ignore cap to transfer in a cooperative world, because uh, most, uh, I think, all, basically all integrated assessment models, they ignore this capital transfer. They assume, so this uh, country, they just uh, live on their own. They don't uh, have any international trade with other countries. So here we say no, in reality, we can have some capital transfer. So then uh, in that case, so if we ignore that, then this will be much larger again. Uh, or, or it will be much smaller, yeah. Uh, or you can know that it will be much larger, sorry. So basically, as yeah, so we say, uh, the North region will have higher carbon taxes than tropical South region in both the uh, cooperative world and uh, non-cooperative world. And uh, also non-cooperation will lead to much lower uh, carbon taxes than the social planners models uh, with economic interaction between the regions. And uh, if the economy is closed, so no international trade, then it will have higher carbon taxes. And uh, if we ignore the poll amplification, then we'll have a lot of biases there. And uh, ignoring sea level rise will underestimate uh, carbon taxes significantly. Ignore, ignoring adaptation will overestimate uh, carbon taxes significantly. So uh, if we add the climate tipping points, then uh, you know, we have a larger, we, if we concern uh, the future more, then we need to have a higher carbon tax now. Uh, in both the in cooperative and non cooperative world. So that's what I did for the first paper. And uh, in the second paper, uh, we say, you know, in future, we know, we know something, uh, say carbon capture, and we have some technology to remove the carbon in that atmosphere. So if we consider that, then what will happen? So basically, then if we consider that, then uh, our capital trans transition law will be changed. So basically, uh, tomorrow's capital is a, today's capital have some depreciation, then is this is your output, then uh, net of damages, net of mitigation costs, then uh, minus your consumption today, minus uh, your payment for this uh, uh, removal uh, of a carbon amount. So uh, is the removal of the carbon amount, we want to pay at the price P at the, for unit price. So then you also have some adjustment cost. So that's uh, your capital transition. Then mark, uh, tr carbon cycle is to uh, say, you have these easy emissions and you need to minus uh, this uh, amount of removal, remove the carbon. So we also incorporate the uh, economic risk there. So then here we can see completely 
development solutions, uh, we can uh, consider uh, carbon capture strategy or not. Or we also consider two degree target or not. So then these four pictures, we can see completely different thing. So here, basically, we can see uh, if there's no, uh, if we have the, the top two is uh, we have carbon, com carbon capture and storage. And uh, it, the, the bottom two, we say if there's no carbon capture and storage, so we can see the third cause of carbon here is much larger than the top one. And also, if we, we ignore this uh, uh, target, uh, climate target here, so then this, this is ignore climate target here, we don't, uh, we, uh, we uh, find with the carbon ta the climate target. Uh, so then, we, if we need to con constrain the temperature under two degrees, then we need to have much higher carbon taxes now. Okay, so basically we have a lot of publications in previous years. So lastly, we have a paper published in JPE. Uh, then uh, previously we have some PNAS uh, nature climate change publications. And I uh, have some uh, working papers uh, recently. So have some have some uh, a lot of impact there. So last year Nobel Prize winner uh, not uh, William Nord House. So uh, the committee uh, there are scientific report started our paper to support us as a Nobel uh, winners uh, award. And uh, also uh, in 2014 White House uh, reporter uh, also cited our papers uh, uh, in our earlier version our working paper. So we, I would like to thank uh, Blue Waters for making this uh, research possible. And uh, so the support team is really great. They are very fast and helpful. And uh, also we want to thank the uh, support of by NSF to, to fund. Yes, thank you.